Okay, well, uh, Blazers pre-draft workouts. Uh, notable name in was probably Tristan De Silva, the the Colorado guard. Yeah, I mean, if you're, t- if you're taking a look at where he sits in mock drafts, he's right there at the edge of the lottery, depending on who you who you look at. They also had Kyle Filipowski, the seven footer from Duke, um, who, despite having a very good interview, is falling down draft boards. Oh, well. He, I've watched him play. I could see I could see how he does not translate to the NBA he, very well. He's got good feel, but he went to the combine and Oh my god. What? The, te- the text line Danny is a cargo short model. I mean <laughs> They're short legs, but they're nice. They're nice. Cargo <laughs> shorts are back in, by the way. I just can't go back from super. Every time I see the word cargo shorts, nobody's been laden cargo shorts since Nam. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. I'm bringing was, them back. Okay, Filipowski. Sorry. No, no, no. It's perfect. That's that's, that's the kind of derailment I'm here for. I can't have the text line up. All right, no. here we go. Uh, but no, he's he's got good feel, good IQ. He's, yeah, he shows some passing instinct, like working in DHOs and being a little bit more of a hub in the middle of the floor, which is probably going to think be a thing that serves him well. But he's supposed to be a shooter, but he didn't shoot it really well enough. And he he talked about uh, today how he's been shooting it better and showing teams that he really can shoot it. I asked him, you know, what what is what are you focusing on to show teams that you weren't necessarily allowed to show at Duke because. Duke, you have to sacrifice something. Like very, very, very. Unless you're Kyrie Irving or Zion, you don't. Get, even Jason Tatum didn't get the opportunity to just be like, "I'm going to do me." Like you have to kind of fit in a little bit. Now, there's a pecking order that really takes place. Um, and he said, uh, "You know, I really wanted to show that I really can't shoot it." And even with that, he's still kind of sliding down from being like a late lottery guy to probably like an early mid twenties guy. Um, that negative wingspan thing really hurt him at the combine. He 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 measured at basically seven foot without socks, and he came in with a sub seven foot wingspan, Yikes. which that's not normal for a seven footer. For a comparison, uh, Tijon Salon uh, measured six nine plus barefoot, so six ten and plus in shoes. He had a seven foot two wingspan, so mm. he's what plus four. That's all right. Which plus four when you're at all that right. size, that's a pretty substantial bump up. Now let's talk to Silva. Uh, six eight, four small forward type. Forty um, percent three point shooters the last two mm-hmm. years at Colorado. I mean, I mean, the, the, his yeah. freshman year was brutal, but the last two years at Colorado, he was sh- he was a forty percent three point shooter uh, for the Buffs, and he, as you said at the beginning of this, he's been one of those fringe guys um as people have been going through the draft process he is a love it's almost as if he's a love him or hate him guy with the draft knicks out there where there's some people that are very high on tristan da silva others um don't think he should be a lottery prospect at all yeah da silva's a guy i I think most people like him i think most people look at tristan and go okay let's let's kind of take a look and see what what we have here and He's an incredibly skilled player. He he does a little bit of everything. And the thing that I like about him is that he he came out through the process last year, right? Uh, he, he came through Portland, even. He didn't do the media stuff, but he got feedback. And it was, okay, you need to work on X, Y, and Z. Continue to show this, continue to show this, um, and then... Kind of see what we can grow from that from out of your game. Yeah. Well, then he goes back to Colorado and does exactly that. And he was in a more featured role. He took a step forward. He, you know, Cody Williams, as much as I like him as a prospect, was not in front of either him or, or in front of De Silva or in front of KJ Simpson. Like De Silva was the guy who was kind of front and center. And if you look at all of his tracking data from Synergy this last year, in uh in all possessions, he rated in the 87th percentile in points per possession that seems good it's really good uh if you look at his overall play type data in the spot up 87th percentile transition 72nd percentile uh 
He was average post up, above average in cuts, above average as a pick and roll ball handler. Insane uh, working out of, of, of dribble handoffs. Pretty good uh, upper, you know, 75th percentile working off screen. Like he does a lot of everything. He can play make, he can put the ball on the floor, he can hit shots. Like he's not this elite athlete, but he's got a solid wiggle to him, and he's 6'9. Yeah, and, but this is going to be the question when you have a guy like Tristan De Silva who. He, they did. They ran so much through him, especially when Cody Williams got injured. Right mm-hmm. at, at the end of the year, when you would watch Colorado basketball, it was kind of a weird thing because De Silva would have the ball in his hands so much, and does that does that ball gravity that he had at Colorado, the amount that he he was working with the ball. Is that going to translate? Can he be a guy who can operate as effectively without the ball in his hand? And that's something that you always like. We have this conversation quite often because really good scaling up, scaling down. Yeah, really good college players. They have the ball in their hand all the damn time. Yeah, and I think that's an interesting. Thing. I think to the Silva, look, if the Blazers took the Silva at fourteen, I do not think it would be a bad pick. I think. If you're going to take and that, that, I should say with a caveat, as long as the Blazers are swinging at seven and they took the Silva at four, I think the Silva's got one of the higher floors in this draft. I think he's going to be whoever drafts Tristan the Silva. I think it's going to be very reminiscent of Jaime Hawkins Jr. with the Miami Heat. Big, oh my God, how did he fall? It's like, dude, that's well, a Damian Lillard trade piece right there. Well, I mean, the, the idea of like him. <laughs> Because he's a little bit older and he's yeah. more developed. Like he understands. Yeah. Like th- there's a reason why you see older players are better. Yes, you want more potential and all those things, but like there's a certain level of functionality that comes with experience. Isn't that one of the problems with the NBA though? Is that, and, and this is why the G League exists. This is why they wanted to start the G League Ignite. But the reason why guys enter the NBA draft so early is because they want to get to their second contract sooner. They want to maximize their earning window as long as they possibly can. And this is where I think NIL may help basketball more than any other sport is because guys now do have an incentive to stick around as opposed to leaving for the, the NBA draft one or two years early and then getting your teeth kicked in where you're not developing nearly as well. And then you can all of a sudden make more money in your first couple of contracts while still get a little bit of cage when you're in college. And Tristan De Silva may be like one of those poster boys for NIL really working in him Keeping going guys back in to college. Colorado yeah. for that one extra year was really good for him. The NBA is not a developmental league. <laughs> the, M- no. the, the two worst professional sports leagues, I think, in the in the major sports world, football, baseball, basketball, hockey, soccer, the big sports. I think the NFL and the NBA are by far the worst developmental leagues in the world of the major sports. I think the Major League Baseball is number one in developmental. Because uh, they have minor league systems that, that they have, control. You have four divisions below your major league yes. that you grow your talent if you do it properly. In the same way with the NHL. Yeah. You take a look at how they, and you look at soccer overseas all the developmental youth clubs and then their u21s and then they you get loaned out to smaller lower level and clubs and even you, like, the mls is getting on board with it now with their junior timbers academies. and timbers too yeah. like that the the nba and nfl you better have your crap together when you get there because that's why i mean the physicality of the nfl gets you out in less than four years that's the reason why in the nba if you don't make it to your second contract you're bouncing around and you're holding on for dear life because there's only 450 spots. Oh, it's more now. It's like 500 spots now. But you just don't have those opportunities to develop. And if you're going to be a role player, yes, you want to get that thing started earlier. But if you're not ready, you can't get on the floor to be a role player. Tristan De Silva, Kyle Filipowski, 14. Both these are guys you're looking at at 14. Neither one of them are seven. Yeah, it, uh, neither Philip one of them are seven. Further down the line, and, and then the, uh, there, there was a fun little note from uh, from De Silva today at the workout. Uh, Jabari Walker and him played together at Colorado, and uh, Sean Hyken asked uh, Tristan De Silva, you know, if he, how if he's been talking to Jabari Walker throughout this process, and 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 whether or not he's been kind of hyping him up behind the scenes. Do you have a relationship with Jabari at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's my boy. <laughs> Has he been? 
kind of hyping you up, telling you like you gotta come here, you gotta, you know. Come on. Nah, he's been he's been more telling me that he's gonna kick my ass. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I'm uh, that tracks. Yeah, we'll we'll yeah. see what happens. <laughs> So honesty is the best policy. I, it's great. I, it's, I love these parts of these interviews because you you can tell kind of who's who's comfortable in the process. In in De Silva was great in in also, his entire media availability. Older guys are better. Yes, that's the big thing. Is you 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 could tell both him and Filipowski both in their interviews crushed it. Like yeah. they their availability was great. Like you the the. Even like talking about their their shortcomings and things that they need about, they know that like if oh if I say this out loud, it's not like a it's not a it's not a death knell. Like they understand like hey look, I'm gonna be a role player in the NBA. I don't need to worry about it. like oh where do I get? And I think for for De Silva going through this process last year and being familiar and understanding like what the expectations were, very similar to Dalton Connect was the same thing where he came through last year, um, not here but the the draft combine process, and I just had an understanding of what he needed to do to get better to be a successful first round pick. And those guys, even though they're both older, a lot of folks that I've talked to in front offices, execs, scouts. Um, other media folks that have, have, have been around, they, they all, they've all said the same thing. Like, just because those guys are older doesn't mean they're done developing. Like, yeah. there, there is occasionally guys that can get better as they get older. You it does pop. happen. You can pop. There still can be another gear there. 